Um, yeah. Alrighty, guys. Also, you should well, get my cap on. Thank you for the follows, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you. Happy Sunday. So next up, we're going to do a lot more technical stuff. I'm going to show you the Reality Expansion Pack extension pack uh, that uh, SimCoders has developed and just recently released for the Stock 172. The Flight Sim Gods have hurt me. I've been praying for that release for uh, several months. Um, and they actually deliver. That's awesome. And also, what's quite exciting is that I'm actually teaming up with SimCoders um, because we think we are a natural fit to collaborate. Um, SimCoders have been uh, following my stream since the beginning and enjoying that content, and I am always have been loving their content, longing for that 172 uh, reality expansion pack. So we are partnering up uh, to bring you a lot more content, and we can do all kinds of nice giveaway events. Um, but um, also a lot more meaningful exchange of audiences so we can uh, further inspire you to, uh, to fly a Cessna 172 in Flight Simulator and still challenge yourself and learn something about flying because that's really the spirit of the Uncertified. You don't need an airliner, you don't need an M FMS, you don't need an autopilot to call yourself a skilled pilot. Even more so, I think it's much more challenging to fly a VFR flight, non-tower in Echo's airspace and find your way around, as you have seen. Um, but hey, that's just me, and I'm uh, I'm really excited about that partnership. So that's cool. Alrighty, uh, one thing I do need is a sip of water. Okay, my chair is good. Up. Okay, so what you're seeing now, what you have seen for this stream was the just the plain Scar uh, Cessna uh, 172 stock airplane, which is already great on its own. Now, I'm going to reload mine. Uh, and that's the Reality Expansion Pack. Start new flight. Don't know where I'm going to start at. Yeah, Therm um, 29. I think it's nicer to fly at... Uh, at thermal though. I like that uh, Palm Springs area. Um, guess not. Uh, Jacqueline or just KTR. Yeah, it's better. Um, same ramp. Good. Okay. Yeah, those are my notes. Um, this is all fine. Let's see, are we? No, we're not at all at sync. This is better. And my door open. And let's see if everything is set here. Yep, my trim is still working. Off, off. Okie do. And fixed. Okay, so we are currently in the Reality Expansion Pack version of the 172. Again, longing for this for a long, long time, but it's finally here. I'm so excited and also excited to be partnering with SimCoders. So, as you can see, we got an additional menu with a lot of interesting stuff. An e-board with uh, nice procedures, which we are already familiar with, but as you can see, which I really liked, uh, also in comparison to earlier versions of the Reality Expansion Pack, they pimped the UI. It's so much more polished and nicer looking. It's really, uh, it's really great, I think. Also with some nice uh, audio uh, sounds here, effects, emergency procedures, references with the tables that I should incorporate with my screens a lot more often. Um, so uh, it's really great to, uh, to be able to access that uh, on the go. Um, we got here a very nice sheet where we can change our weight and balance and we can see how we are doing, which is great. You can change this now in kilos, but you can change uh, the units here. Um, so that's uh, very, very basic. Cool. Um, the walk around. So 
uh, that's a nice addition. Again, I have to say, um, as part of my training, as uh, as my season two, I guess, already is progressing, um, the walk around is not that relevant anymore to me as a as a student pilot. Uh, it was in the beginning where I was also using A2A, uh, the 172 and the 182. Also, the airfoil labs that includes a very thorough uh, walk around. But for me, it doesn't provide that much educational value anymore. Still, I'm uh, very pleased to. Um, to see that it's incorporated here in the sim coders so 172 and they did a, an amazing job as you can see um, here's a window that shows you uh, all the different walk around the walk around flow usually always this direction um, and all the different spots that we go through to do particular checks um, so first we are here in the um, in the cockpit itself and we can do a few checks here to make sure that our airplane is ready for the walk around inspection for example you need to lower your flaps so you can look at the bolts and the connecting rods and that kind of stuff um, and the uh, flow uh, the check list here goes um, um, brings you through that particular flow of, of, of checks which is uh, great um, trim controls fuel se selector valves and that kind of stuff that's good still part of that uh, checkbox number one and also here outside you can check whether the baggage door I should check whether the baggage door is secured and locked um, and you go around in the same kind of fashion as I already showed you in for other airplanes uh, in other streams before but it's it's really really great it's not a dynamic walk around as you would uh, be offered by uh, airfoil labs so it's just clicking this button also with the A2A it's the same uh, way so you can just click and very quickly go through all the different checks um, I'll check the elevators here nice sound effects like ni nice echo it sounds really realistic um, also here the rudders that we can check and also the failure system is also it's the the sim coders is based on its own system flight systems um, um, algorithms I guess um, and those are quite complex and very advanced so that's cool as well so all of these surfaces and also the electrical systems and the everything that you can imagine being in a real world 172 um, can um, fail on you during a flight and and what's even more awesome uh, which is uh, also something that A2A is doing and Airfall Labs too I guess is that the airplane grows old with you um, so it actually remembers each each session even outside of your flight simulator use so uh, if I would keep my Cessna like this and uh, not prep it for a long parking in the hangar the oil engine oil would deteriorate um, I have a much greater chance when I turn it and um, start my engines again that uh, I get um, wrong engine behavior and because I didn't take care of my Cessna in between flights that's awesome that's awesome. You can even change your oil, ty uh, oil types um, based on the right outside temperatures and again for storage and, and stuff. That's awesome. Um, and that realism is added with this reality expansion pack. Um, again, we can move on. We can also do all kinds of tie downs, um, which is uh, which is also really nice. Again, you might you, you can imagine, I guess, that it's not that educationally relevant for me as a uh, more advanced pilot, a VFR pilot, but still it's great to see that this is uh, incorporated. And again, that care is also part of any real-world VFR or IFR flight, so, so why not? Uh, we can check the antennas and stuff, and again here we should check the flaps. I didn't lower my chaps, so this is a little bit of a silly check, and in the real world also you would go underneath the flap and look at all the connecting stuff there to see if uh, that's uh, proper. Um, ailerons same kind of thing um, here we could do tie downs we can check the uh, amount of fuel here we can set uh, chocks and also you can see the uh, quality of the wheels which is also uh, nice uh, which can all change based on how rough you land and all kind of that that kind of so you can see oils already been used up by Mireya and that, that's not true that's by me uh, in my uh, review flights uh, before the stream um, so it's 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 all it's all dynamic. It's a, a living and breathing airplane, uh, which is which is really really great, I think. Covers and it's all interactive, right? These are not just gadgets or nice props to make it look more pretty. This stuff actually interacts with how the uh, engine or the airplane behaves. Um, that's awesome as well. Fuel quantity, feeder tube, cover. Again, we could uh, tie down here same checks here and then we are back inside uh, the cockpit so that external walk around is also part of the reality extension pack uh, which is uh, which is great uh, 
Um, so, having said that, um, I've got a lot of um, things to say about it. Um, some tops, uh, some 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 top remarks, some top uh, scores. I think of where the sim coders really makes it a an excellent package, a must have actually for any student pilot who is looking for serious flight training in, in flight sim. Uh, but I also have some tips. And again, because I'm collaborating with sim coders, um, I would also love to chat with them about things how they can further improve on next versions of the reality expansion pack. Uh, again, those guys are, are so sophisticated and real-world pilots as well. Uh, I would love to discuss and uh, us as a community to provide feedback so we can further improve on this reality ex ex extension pack. So what you're seeing now is the first version, at least for the uh, Cessna 172, is, is the reality extension pack version 3.1. Point zero, um, and so uh, when there is an upgrade of that reality extension pack, it also applies to all the other products that they are offering. Um, uh, the uh, the reality extension pack for um, so still it's in it's, it's it's always in continuous development, and they're putting so much care into uh, getting as much realism to us as uh, student pilots here as possible. So that's great. But I'm also that doesn't mean that I'm just gonna uh, say yes and be pleased uh, about any feature. I'm also gonna be critical uh, as a as a as a proper customer uh, i'm going uh, to give you a, f a thorough review of the things that i think that could still be improved upon um but still i think um uh, this package is, is is so nice i will uh, fly with the reality expansion pack uh, from now on here on my stream thanks for the follows guys mister thanks and fs economy tony b thanks and eldmon and crocs resolox snake skags chrissy and so many of you here happy sunday okay um, let me see. Let me just give you my remarks right off, and we can just fly, and you can see what it is doing. Um, iPad. So, really, expansion version three point one point zero. Tops and tips and some remarks. First, the tops, and these are mine, right? This is my own op opinion about flying this particular reality, reality uh, extension pack version, but I think it's worth mentioning. First off, many, many features. The walk around, but also additional sounds. Um, the, the, the weight and balance stuff, uh, the tie downs. There's a lot of stuff in this that we're gonna hopefully cover in this uh, next uh, part of the stream. Also, it's quite cheap in comparison to the Airfall Labs and to the A2A uh, 172. Thanks for the follow RC, thank you. Uh, and it's also because um, the reality extension pack doesn't include the aircraft. It's just an extension, and a reality extension pack. Um, and what's great about this one in particular is that we all, if you fly X-Plane 11, we all already have the stock 172. So you only need to pay for that extension pack rather than for the Airflow Labs or for the one um, or the A2A, where you also get that aircraft included. And the stock 172 is so pretty, um, it's, um, it's, it's really a joy to fly. So that's good. Very, very easy install is just a zip file with a folder in it that you just put into your Cessna 172 aircraft folder and you start it up and it says, what is your license code? And there you are. Boom, you're done. A pretty UI, better UI also in comparison to the earlier versions. I think it's really, really neat. It looks great. Also here the um, uh, maintenance report. Oh, look at this. Um, so you can see what the engine is actually doing. You can change the fuel, uh, types of fuel. You can see, it, it, I, I really love this uh, Imagineering, uh, Imagineered kind of kneeboard as if we um, just uh, were handed this over by the, uh, by the engineer from the hangar. Um, it's, it's really, really great. And we can go through all of these kinds, uh, all kinds of features or elements of our aircraft to see if it's actually working properly. We can also preheat the engine first and you will actually see a, a 3D object of a heater here just in outside that heats up the engine in case we've got cold temperatures outside. Um, and it all works, it all interacts with how the aircraft behaves and uh, how we take care of that aircraft, um, which is really, really great. Charge, you can see not a lot of charge there, so we can recharge our batteries. There it is. You can also disconnect the battery if you are planning not to fly for a while, um, so the battery doesn't drain on its own. Um, so even in between, so imagine that, right? And it is also uh, what A2A is doing, I guess Airflow Labs too, but it's it's awesome if you're new to this, that the airplane also is there, exists virtually outside of your use of flight sims. So when you are on a holiday break, you know that your aircraft, your Cessna is in the hangar, is still there uh, deteriorating if you don't uh, take care of it and change the oil types and all kinds of that stuff. That's cool, I think. that's cool. Um, 
So um, again, uh, I, I love the UI. That's a great uh, that's a great improvement. Also, you can do an automatic engine start if you don't care of all of that realism. But I think very few pilots will uh, will press that button because I think it's just cool to go through all the procedures. Um, Next up, a nice, uh, oh yeah, realistic rudder deflection during taxi. That's a big one for me. So now the, the Cessna Sky actually behaves like it should be when you're taxiing. It's much more slow. It feels much more heavy. Um, uh, it, it's much more realistic than the default 172 where you can just peer right on one wheel if you like. Um, that's nice. That's cool. Nice extra sounds. Also, I don't think that the engine sounds have changed. I don't notice a change in comparison to the stock 172, but they did add, uh, add all of kinds of other nice tweaks to, to, or not really tweaks, I guess, additional sounds. The avionics sounds has a nice pop to it, like I recognize it also from other um, Simcoders products, which is nice. Also, very nice taxi bump. So when you go on a hill, especially when you got uh, runway to terrain contours, checked on in X-Plane, and when there's a little hubble there, there's a really nice, realistic sound of something rambling in your in your cockpit. It's cool. Also, in terms of winds, uh, you will hear uh, about that stuff uh, very, very soon. Um, I think that's good. And also, it works good uh, with uh, XP Realistic, because XP Realistic, I also fly with that package, and it also includes all kinds of sounds and stuff. Um, and it works really, really, really great. The only thing that I did was uh, increase the volume of some features of my XP Realistic um, pro um, uh, profile, uh, but that was just uh, fine, I guess. Realistic ground takeoff tendencies in crosswind. That's also so cool. So now with a crosswind um, uh, takeoff, the airplane much more behaves like it should with the deflections, with the rudder, and with the yoke. Um, that is important stuff to me, at least as a student pilot, because there's a lot of skill, stick, stick and rudder skill involved with the uh, crosswind landings and also takeoffs. Realistic rudder deflection during takeoff roll. Uh, with the stock 172, I needed to deflect, and also Muraya needed to, uh, to put a lot of correction in the rudder, too much actually, an exaggerated amount of rudder correction to keep the airplane on the center line, and now it's much more corrected like it is in the real world. I've been flying a 172 just a couple of times, um, a few years ago, and I can tell that it, uh, this feels much more like it. It's also much more like the A2A, so this is a great enhancement, I think. Hey, Philip, good to see you. Taco, my two-year-old is sitting here actually watching and listening to you. That's awesome, Taco. Welcome to you guys. Hoping you enjoy this more technical introduction. Still, I'm going to fly this airplane uh, in just a few minutes, but I'd like just to go through my uh, general comments here. I think that's, uh, that's interesting. Um... Works well with our uh, XP Realistic. Overall, um, I would give this an 8 out of 10 score at the moment. And I think it's a must-have. And again, the Reality Extension Pack is continuously developed on, is continuously de uh, improved. Um, and this is version 3.1.0. Uh, I, I, I will not go back from this Reality Extension Pack. And I will, from now on, fly with this uh, product uh, in the 172. Now, tips. Again, I'm also a critical pilot. I'm also a critical customer. Uh, I think that's important. And Simcoders has a really good supporting uh, um, a team there that's constantly listening to feedback, customer feedback. Um, and it's also something that I really, really appreciate also in comparison to the Airflow Labs, for example, where there is radio silence for a couple of months, uh, bugs, reports are not being fixed and that kind of stuff. I think that's really important. Also, a primary reason for me to, to team up with Simcoders to to get a more direct information flow going so we can tell them what we really, really like um, and they hopefully can improve upon that as well. Now, these are tiny things, but I think they're worth mentioning. First, one thing that I noticed, which I also noticed with the other uh, Reality Extension Pack features, um, if you've got the work, uh, walk around here, uh, let me put that just outside of this window, I like to click those spots and directly go to that position rather than go through the entire walk around to get to my pitot tube, for example. Just a tiny thing, but that's something that I like. Hey, um, thanks for the follow. Um, also in the manual, again, just a tiny thing, but I'm mentioning uh, on that level, I need to mention uh, the things that I'm noticing here. Uh, in the manual, it says that when you do your priming before engine starts, you need to give full throttle and then do the prime. Uh, that's not realistic, actually. And as you can see in the checklist here, 
in the sim, so not the manual, but the sim, actually here the procedure is correct. Open one quarter inch, and that actually works. Um, so I think the manual should be changed uh, there. Also, if you do prime the engine with a full throttle in, you get a really exaggerated fuel flow that goes above the green arc here, actually, and you actually flood the engine. And that's also s another remark that I will uh, tackle soon. Um, so don't do that, just open a one quarter inch. That's also realistic. What the... Um, uh, checks also say here, and it also says in the manual, which I think is not realistic, is that you should prime the engine very, very briefly up until you see a fuel flow of about 3 to 5 gallons per hour. Well, in, to my knowledge, and I've uh, reviewed so many checklists for my own unofficial student checklist for the 172, also the 182, I've also been in a 172 flying with that, all the manuals say that you should actually prime the engine for 3 up to 5 seconds and you see a steady fuel flow of, I guess, about 3 to 5 gallons per hour, but um, it should be a few seconds or so. Now, with the current version of the Rayleigh Extension Pack, you should prime the engine for tops a second or two, otherwise you flood the engine. You also see a, 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 a very exaggerated fuel flow there, and I think that's not realistic. That's just me, uh, based on my study, but hey. Um, so if you stick to the real-world checklist, I imagine you would flood the engine quite quickly. Uh, also what I like, I like, but still is also something that I haven't seen before, is when you prime the uh, engine with the fuel pump, you see a more pumpery-like fuel flow, uh, which is nice. I haven't seen that in the real world, though, also not with the A2A or the other Cessnas, also not on, on YouTube movies. Perhaps that's something specific to the SP version of the 172, um, but that's something that I noticed. Again, fuel full throttle uh, there usually leads to a flooded engine. Also what I noticed is after shutdown, so if you start the engine and it's running, then obviously the engine is primed. There's engine or there's fuel running in the pipelines, right, of the engine. If you then shut down the engine, you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't need to reprime the engine with a fuel pump to start your engine because there's already engine there. There's already fuel in the in the pipelines. Um, and you can just start the engine skipping that fuel pump exercise. That's the fuel pump uh, procedure. And that's not the case with the current version of the 172, or I guess for all the reality extension pack products. So in this case, we need to re-prime uh, the engine and do the same kind of procedure as, uh, as uh, depicted here, as uh, described here in the checklist. And that's not realistic. You should be able to, re again, if you do that in the real world, you actually flood the engine because there is already engine, or there's already fuel in the engine pipelines. Um, so I'm hoping that they will improve upon that as well. Um, also, stall behavior of the Cessna 172 is much better than uh, with the stock 172, but I think it's still a little bit too stable. So it's actually very hard to stall this uh, this 172. We will do that soon. Um, it's also almost impossible to get it into a spin, um, which we're also going to try uh, in this stream. Thank you for all the follows, guys. You're so welcome here. Um, again, though, for my use of the 172, thanks for the subscription, Tago. Thank you. Much appreciated. That's uh, really encouraging. Thank you. Um, uh, as, as part of my training, especially now with my Season 2 of my series, I'm not that so much into stalling or spinning. But still, if you are a student pilot, I think that's an important behavior of your airplane, and I think that should be... Uh, spot on and i don't think it is at the moment but uh, i'm not totally sure about that it's 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 very hard to stall this engine and if it stalls you do see a dip now of one wing usually the left wing that stalls which is quite realistic much better than with this just a plain stock 172 but still i think it's quite stable um anyway um and also what they added which is nice um is a um sound of wind on the airframe when you are flying. So as soon as you lift off, you hear the wind rushing over the windshield, which is actually quite uh, quite nice. Um, XP Realistic also can add that airframe wind uh, to um, to your um, uh, to your airplane while you're flying. It's also dynami dynamic, so if you pitch up or pitch down in that change, you hear the wind a little bit more louder than when you just are on a steady, straight and level flight, um, which is good. But I do think that that sound is a little bit too loud to me. Uh, I d Again, don't have that much experience with flying a real 172 in the real world, so perhaps that's just me. 
as a customer, I would love to see a slider where, where I can change the volume of that particular sound. Um, if I change that in the sound settings, oh yeah, Snipe, I will also go to, um, to my yoke settings uh, sensitivity soon. Uh, anyway, if I change the master or the different sound sliders in X-Plane 11, then also all of the other sounds that I do like uh, will also become less loud, which I won't like to see happening. So um, that's also a feature request, I guess, that I'd like to see. Also, the last, the last one, uh, I've also been flying with crosswinds here and uh, trying to test the, uh, the reality extension pack in, in those settings. And I'm noticing that's also the case for the stock 172 without the wrap, um, is that you need full rudder deflection for a 15 knot uh, crosswind to stay on the center line. Uh, and I don't think that's that realistic. I mean, obviously you need to put some significant rudder deflection there, but not that much. I mean, I think even a 15 knot crosswind and direct crosswind, um, so really the direct vector there, um, uh, for me now in flight sim, flying the rep would be a no-go because uh, I cannot even taxi on the runway a little bit into the wind because I don't have any deflection left on my rudder pedals to make that little bit of a, of a turn. Um, so uh, I know that the Cessna Skyhawk, I think in the POH, also says something about a maximum crosswind component of 15 knots. So perhaps that is realistic in that sense, but from my experience flying other, also the one sent you in a crosswind for in the real world, also um, with other airplanes in flight sim, a 15 knot should be fine. I mean, obviously you should put in significant uh, pedal uh, pedal um, correction, but not that much. Um, so that's a remark or a question, I guess, um, that I'd like to see answered. Um, all right. Um, again, as a critical customer, uh, still, I love our uh, rep, um, and I think it's a great addition. I'm so excited that it's finally here, but these are things that I noticed and I think it's worth mentioning also to you guys because I know you trust me and uh, are looking at the, are looking for the best add-ons for your for your flight sim, especially when you're an X-Plane 11 user. And this is my honest opinion. Um, also, I bought my own um, uh, reality extension pack uh, product here. Uh, so I was not provided a free license or so. Final remarks. Um, that's also something about me, I guess. Uh, again, the reality extension pack is an extension pack. It just it doesn't add new interactions in the cockpit. So, as, as you might know, um, in the stock 172, thanks for the follow, Betty. Uh, for example, here the cabin heat and the cabin air are not interactive. Well, sim coders cannot change that because this is made by X-Plane, right? The same goes for the Carinado planes. Um, I guess the same would be true for changing the GPS. I would love to see a slant alpha configuration in the 172 rather than the GPS. SIM coders cannot change that. Uh, perhaps another provider or someone else can do it. I don't know, but I think it's not... Uh, it's, that will not be part of the SIM coders package. So uh, still that stuff is not interactive, right? Um, also the window cannot be opened. That's just part of the stock 172 physical 3D aircraft model. So the only thing that reality expansion does, which is I think the most important chunk, is adding realism to the already designed 172 in terms of air uh, engine management, in terms of the flight model and all of that stuff. Um, so don't expect to see any new levers or stuff that are now interactive because that's not the case. Um, and I also think, and that's also where I will refer you to an upcoming video by Avanek, a good friend of mine, um, also flying here on the stream with me. Um, I think it's also very valuable for you guys who are considering to buy the uh, Sim Coders Reality Extension Pack to know the difference between that pack and the Airfall Labs, if you're an X-Plane 11 user. Now, I'm, or, I'm also familiar with the Airfall, uh, also familiar with the Airfall Labs product. I've uh, been flying for that for a couple of streams, uh, but then uh, left that product because, again, a lacking support team, um, recurring bugs, uh, every version still was buggy. Uh, still, uh, after so many promises, the engine management or engine behavior was still not realistic. Um, and so I just got annoyed and dropped that product entirely. Um, and I'm, that's why I'm also so glad that SimCoders um, uh, jumped in and delivered this uh, wrap. Uh, still, though, there are some things of the Airfall apps that I do like that I hope sim, co sim coders would apply here as well. Um, one thing, and it's not a big thing at all, but it does provide immersion or some sense of joy, is the um, dynamic walk around where you actually can walk around the airplane using your yoke, so not using just preset views, but you can actually walk around the aircraft and also 
click on the aircraft, actually on the physical here in X-Plane, on the uh, model, for example, your baggage door and um, the, well, the flaps, all of that stuff. I think that's really cool. Also, just to 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 turn off or the uh, to um, to screw off the uh, the fuel tank um, thing, uh, and to really look inside and see the dip of the oil. That's so cool. But I guess that really requires additional 3D modeling. Uh, but that's the only thing that uh, I would love to see here in sim cars and is very low on my list in terms of priorities. So that's a little bit of a well, I guess a contradictory uh, recommendation or uh, feature request, but still, in comparison to the Airflow Labs, everything else, I think Simcoders is a is a big winner there. It's much more realistic. I love the basic stock 172 airframe. Um, it's it's really a joy to fly now with the rep. Uh, it's even better. That's my honest opinion about the rep. Uh, so so excited. And uh, I'm sure they will continue to optimize um, the flight model and the stuff, and hopefully uh, also incorporate some of the tips that I provided here to uh, make the um, the airplane even uh, better. So uh, I think that's awesome. Thanks for all the follows, guys. Much appreciated. Good to see you here on the stream. So let's get flying, and I can show you. Um, on thermal. In the wonderful Palm Springs area. All right, seat belts fastened. Also, what's something that I would like to see here in the sim coders uh, would be a physical model here, and I guess that it's also something that they cannot Im include here because it's made by Laminar, right? This air aircraft model, but uh, to see a physical model here of the pilot, also the uh, control wheel lock there that you can put off. Those tiny details are nice gimmicks, I guess, but not relevant if you are a um, uh, a student pilot, I think, uh, especially when you progress through your VFR training, especially for IFR training, those things become actually a little bit redundant. I guess also the walk around becomes redundant. Also in my case, it takes a lot of time, and um, I don't. My my focus now for my training is IFR flying, instrument flying, navigation, ADC. Um, but hey, that's just uh, that's just me. Door closed. Okay, so again, reality expansion pack, um, and we're gonna just first check whether we are cold and dark. Um, life vest, fire extinguisher, let's pretend it's there. Door is closed, ELT set to auto, flap lever is up, and my flaps are up. Good. Throttle obviously is working, make sure as well. Trim is set to neutral, fuel tank set to both. Cutoff is in, alternate is in, circuit breakers again. Love to see those interactive, uh, but that's again nothing. Nothing that sim coders can do for us. Uh, I guess they would love to, but um, that's part of the stock 172. Also, not a big one, um, but again, I'm just mentioning that. Uh, my switch panel is working. That's good too, and my avionics are off. Good. Thanks for the follows, guys. One zero. Thank you, and happy Sunday. All right. Um, let's prime the engine. So again, batteries on. Um, Throttle a, a quarter inch in. Now, in the real world, I would turn on my fuel pump and put in my mixture for about three to five seconds to prime the engine, and we would see a little bit of a fuel flow here. Um, and then we can turn on the engine. Air with the rep, currently, in the current version, it should be a very brief mixture full in. Uh, almost, you can almost go full in and full out, because otherwise you will flood the engine. Um, so let's do that right now. We'll just do an ordinary startup. So fuel pump on. In, we can see your eyes. There it is. And back again. Fuel pump off. And again, parking brakes are set, right? Yes, they were set. And no one is around. No, nope. so clear prop. And make sure full in. Back to both. And 1200. As you can see, that wiggle of the RPM is so cool. It's so cool. Engine is already in the green. That's good. And what I also love, and again, these are all the things that I. What I just reviewed were the main tips and or tops. Uh, but there are so many details here that I really, really enjoy. For example, the wiggle here of the RPM. I think that looks so realistic. Also now you can see that the uh, oil temperature is not immediately in the green. So it takes some time to warm up the engine. If you don't take care of that and go into high RPMs right off, you're gonna damage the airplane because the oil is not on temperature. It's not lubricating the entire engine and you can actually damage that and you will notice that in your flight performance. Now, that's important stuff, and they nailed that, and that's good. Generator on, because you're rising the M meter, that's good. What I also now see, finally, is now we didn't lean the engine right right away. Um, let's do that right now, and as you can see, look closely at the RPM. 
now the RPM reacts on my leaning. So I'm now leaning, 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 leaning. You see a little bit of a rise, and now a dip. That's realistic. You should get a, the highest RPM there, so you're lean properly for ground. So now I should put in a little bit more R, uh, mixture here, and now I'm on peak RPM. And then I can set it to 1000. That's a proper leaning, ground leaning procedure. I could also go full ridge right now, and set it on 1000. And as you can see, on 1000 RPM, I'm now leaning. Oh, well, no, I'm not leaning yet. Let's get just 1000 here. It's also lagging behind a bit, which is great. Full mixture right. Let's go full mixture. No. There it is. If I now lean a bit. Yeah, you can still see that the RPM is reacting to that leaning. But it's not that significant as when I did that at 1200. Which is also quite realistic. Well, those details they are not that important. But I, uh, you can see that they really put care in simulating the engine uh, here. Which is, uh, which is great. Okay, so we leaned back to a thousand. Avionics on. Li listen closely. You can also hear that popping sound, that lovely sim coders popping sound of the avionics. I guess that's also the popping sound that you would hear in your headphones. That sounds really cool. Okay. Um, flaps down just to see whether those are working and they are working. Also should check the ailerons here. Our rudders are working too. Also a thing that I would like to see them improve actually is this menu is cool but I think it's distracting being there. I'm noticing it while I'm flying. Why is it there? It should also could also be here or even at the bottom or in my right bottom corner. I'd also like to turn it off and just get a key bind where I can bring up that menu when I need it. Otherwise it's distracting and it reminds me that I'm flying a flight simulator and not in real life. So um, I would love to see that included as well. And again, perhaps they will. They are listening to us, guys. Um, okay, so uh, that sets Mode C, we don't need NAS. Frequencies was 123.0. I think that was right for thermal. 123.0. Yes. Hey, my. Uh, let me see. My iPad is not updating. Uh, let me see. Lights and turn off. Turn on again. Does it work now? Not that the uh, iPad is that important. I guess I could just turn it off. We don't need the map and I don't need my notes anymore. So let's just leave it off. It's fine. Okay. Um, so here we are. 123.0. Um, we're going to take runway 17. I don't really care. Whoa. Okay. There was a message there for my windows. Um, heading bug. I don't need. This is all fine. We're just going to do a test flight here. This is uh, This is cool. Okay, um, so that's about it. So release, park and brakes. Brake test seems to work. And again, one thing I noticed immediately was that the Cessna was now texting in a much more realistic way. So it's not that, it isn't, isn't that sensitive anymore. And it feels like the Cessna actually has some weight to it, like in the real world. So now, so you can hear, when I go idle, you can hear it sputter, the engine. And actually you're fouling the plugs in the engine and you will notice that in the RPM and you can actually also do the real procedure of cleaning the plugs as part of your run-up that's cool so you also as in the real world you should always apply some RPM here to keep the engine warm the cylinders warm to prevent that uh, sparks uh, those sparks from um, fouling and also obviously uh, texting with uh, a leaned uh, mixture but it's so nice those uh, little sounds that they added which is great also now with turning, it's much more heavy. So I'm now giving full left and now full right. And it's still going. So that's much more realistic. You can also not pirouette on one wheel if you like to. So you actually need to apply your toe brakes as well. That's much more realistic. Engine is slowly warming up as you see. It's not in the green just yet. 
also very realistic. So it's actually it feels like a live a living and breathing airplane in flight sim. And that's important to me as a, a student pilot. Now we could just do a intersection departure here. Landing lights on, strobe lights on. I think I'm not on pilot edge and I like to be. Also the brake sound here is by sim coders. Connect. Tango in your mic. Connected to pilot edge. Connected to pilot edge. Alright. Thanks for the follows, guys. Captain, thank you. 51. Bull, thank you also for the follow. Much appreciated. Happy Sunday. Getting cozy here. 88 people on board. That's great. With our four-seater. All crammed up there. Cochrane traffic, Yellow Skyhawk is departing runway 17 at Alpha, and we're gonna fly a little bit northeast of the area to do some practice turns and then return. Cochrane traffic, mixture full in. Oh, we could also do a uh, a run up, I guess. Let's do that. Let's taxi a little bit further on. Don't hear anyone on the radio, so. Cochrane traffic, Yellow Skyhawk is canceling our departure. We just do a run up first, Cochrane. Again, you can hear the engine sputter. That's great. Well, I think I cannot make this turn. Need to apply a lot of RPM here. My engine was warm enough to do that. This is like it is in the real world. Toe brake. All right, there we are. Um, so, here we are. Uh, mixture full in. Engine is warm enough. Uh, that's good. So, let's go 1800s. No one unshaded messages. Oil pressure is good. Everything looks quite stable. That's perfect. Left mag. Looks good. Back to both. Right mag. Looks good. Back to both. And landing lights were already on. You can see now that the M meter is much more reflect um, reactive to my landing lights than earlier with the stock 172. So that's good. So there's actually a working battery in my Cessna Skyhawk. That's great. Uh, keep the landing lights on. And let's go full idle. Again, the engine will stutter. But this time, I'd like to see if it doesn't quit on us. Oil pressure is still there. That's good. Looks good. And back to a thousand. Awesome. Hey, just Alex. Good to see you, dude. I think Mary would also find this easier to taxi. Well, it could be finish. I don't know. I was thinking about letting her fly the rep also uh, earlier. But then I thought, well, let's just stick to the... Uh, uh -oh. Otherwise, she needs to acquaint herself with so many new things. Cochrane traffic, Yellow Skyhawk is the parting runway 17. We're going to do some practice uh, turns to the northeast and return later. Cochrane. Make sure full in. We're fully lit up. Uh, trim is set. Fuel tank set to both. Both. There we are. Again. Giving a lot of right rudder there to keep me centered. Full power. And again, I'm only giving a little bit of right rudder here. Not a, f a really significant, exaggerated pedal deflection like uh, was the case with the stock 172. So that's good. I already hear the winds. Do you hear the wind sounds? That is sim coders. Not XP realistic. I could, but... Now, I do like that wind sound but perhaps this is a little bit too much and the problem is I think it's an audio file that is a standalone so if I change my master volume slider in explain it doesn't change the, it doesn't change the wind sound and I would love to change that sound anyway you can hear the the pitch of that sound change Which is okay and it's realistic. Garcon traffic, Yellow Skyhawk is turning left crosswind runway 17. We're gonna depart the traffic area to do some practice turns at the northeast. Garcon. Also something that I found by accident, no by Evanek I think, is you can change the 
Fahrenheit depiction here into Celsius by using this arrow click spot. I've always been trying to translate Fahrenheit into Celsius, but this is how you do it. Thanks for the follow, Warm. Thank you. What's also something that I didn't notice, which I also really, really like, is engine power. Now I get a nice climb with a proper airspeed. With the stock 172, it almost feels like an 82. Uh, I would already be flying 80 or 90 with this, uh, with this climb, so it feels much more like a small, cute 172. Much more realistic. So we can fly over there, do some traffic pattern uh, or uh, traffic practice turns. Just be aware of that MTR that's over there, but I think that would be fine. Thanks for the follows, guys. McLaren, thank you. And it's so pretty outside here. So again, I'm listening to that wind sound. It does provide immersion, but it's a bit too loud for me. Also, I think it's the sound of the wind that you would hear without the headset on. But with the headset on, you wouldn't necessarily hear that, right? And I think with the other reality extension packs for the other aircraft that are made by Caronado, which do provide a, putting on a headset and stuff, I think, they include that sound drop, volume drop, when you um, put on the virtual headset here and you don't hear the uh, wind winds that, that much. But here with the stock 172, that's not possible. But Therefore, I would like to see a, um, a slider. Thanks for the follow, Bank. Okay, so let's um, go to 3000 and do a stall which is not safe at this altitude with this terrain, but hey, why not? Also with turning, the airplane feels a little bit more rigid, a little bit more heavy, and also, in my view, much more realistic. Explain, please. And then explain, Hanks. No, it doesn't. Oh, luckily. That gave me a scare. It's much more stable. It's much more real. Thanks, Trooper. Appreciate that. Okay. Three thousands. Full flaps. The sound that you're hearing now, the wiggly rambling sound, that's XP realistic that I set to uh, provide that sound. So that's not included with the rep. And again, uh, the rep works perfectly with uh, with XP realistic pro. All right, getting to our stall speed here. Not there yet, which is realistic. This was not possible with the uh, stock 172. Again, you see the left wing dip already, that's correct. There comes the stall horn. This is slow flight. You should only apply rudders here to steer. Let's stall. Pulling on that yoke, pulling on that yoke, pulling on that yoke, pulling on the yoke. Still pulling, full pull. And there we go. It's a right wing dip. Full power here. Return to 3000 to do it another time. Another uh, try. To me, it feels a little bit too stable. But, again, this is not a biggie for me. Here we are. Goes to speed. Full 
full pull, full pull now. And they're slowly, it's not even going. Giving some right rudder here and a full pull deflection. Giving right rudder. This to me is too stable. So I am dropping, but... And full power. So that's a note worth, that's worth a note, I think. Uh, let's do a stall. Uh, or a spin, I mean. I guess it's a little bit much of a terrain issue here. I have to admit, though, again, with this speed, the wind sounds are not that loud this is the kind of volume that I like for my entire flight that's realistic it, it sounds like outside of my headset wind is rushing on the windshield but when I'm on cruise speed it becomes too loud thanks for the follows guys Luke thank you much appreciated welcome on the stream not too high for a spin here but I just like to but again you can also see now it's full power 20 degrees of flaps and this is our climb which makes sense it feels like I'm only flying a small cute little Skyhawk rather than a stock 172 that feels like a 182 to me most of the times so that's good All right, a stall. So how uh, a spin? How do we get into a spin? Well, you get to stall speed, and as soon as you're there, you give full left or right rudder, and left or corresponding aileron. So we could do full because we we expect a left dip of the wing. That's the wing that that stalls first, usually. So we're gonna go stall. And once we're stalling, we get a full stall, stall horn warning. I'm going to go full left rudder and full left aileron. Let's see what happens. Now, I think I, I managed to get one spin, I believe. And then it already was stable and I was without doing any recovery techniques. Here we go. Uh, should we use full flaps? Let's... Do not first. Four thousand feet. Got a full stall going and then left aileron, left rudders. Sounds like a full stall, nothing is really happening here. Left aileron, left rudder. No, 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 no. I stopped a couple of times there with the spin. That was because I was relieving my yoke and aileron um, input because I would expect that the airplane on its own would spin around, right? That's, that's what a spin is, an uncontrolled spin. But as soon as I keep my yoke neutral and my rudders neutral, it just becomes a stable flight. So that's not realistic. Let's do it with full flaps to see if that makes a difference. Again, flying already towards Bermuda here. Bermuda Airport. Bermuda Dunes. Uh, yeah, Kimo, I know. But let's just see whether that gives a little bit more of a realistic feel. In terms of spinning behavior. First dash of flaps. Second. And full flaps. What a lovely scenery. Never gets boring. Pull on the throttle. There we go again.
There's the mosquito. Again, full yoke backwards and left. No. And my flaps would be ripped off of my wing. Okay. Um, so, yeah. There is a stall warning, obviously. There is some spin behavior, but it's not realistic. And you could ask, well, who cares? And that's a good question. I guess if you're a student pilot and you really like to practice stalls and stall recoveries, then the current version of rep doesn't provide you with that realism. That's my honest opinion. But I'm sure that they can improve on that. I would see, I would expect to see a much more significant left drop of the wing. All right. Anything else? Um, well, in terms of reviewing the rep, I don't think so. No leaning and all that stuff. It, it, you fly much more like following the performance tables, so that's great. Uh, the turning and stuff is much more realistic. And again, obviously, you got all kinds of failures going on. So perhaps I already. Um, dam damage my wings or damage my flaps or damage my engine or whatever without me knowing yet because rep is running on its own failure system um, and that's something that I cannot easily show you guys or demonstrate because it's something that just happens organically evolves while um, while flying and that's great I think that still the failure system of X-Plane still applies to the uh, sim coders system so I can still fly with partial instruments and just press a button and then my attitude indicator wouldn't work or my altimeter wouldn't work or whatever I set so that's also good even though it's got its own failure triggers that stuff still works and well there are many other features there if you're interested just hop over to simcoders.com and look at the 172 rep product and you can see uh, an entire list of all the things that they included uh, but these are the main things that I noticed as a experienced uh, flight sim pilot that really gives it uh, gives this product added value to my uh, to my training here, which uh, I'm so excited about. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is transition into a brief session of training because that's also something that's important in my case. Yeah, Diogo, thanks for the follow. Um, Still, I got a 90 knots. I'm really hearing that rushing wind over. Hoping that you guys can even hear me chat here on stream. Um, I'm going to fly on the magnetic compass. Because I had some trouble doing that last time. This time I'm going to keep the heading indicator on here. So I have a better idea of what's going on. I've been studying the King School's video course. To get a sense of how the magnetic compass should be flown. There are some tricks about it. Or errors, I should say. And that is, when you're flying near a north heading or near a south heading. I mean near in terms of the compass reading. You've got the biggest deflection of heading indication in comparison to your real heading. Thanks for the follows, guys. Much appreciated. About 30 degrees or so. If you're flying in easterly or westerly direction, then your heading indicator is pretty much on par with your actual heading if you look at your heading indicator. Um, and also your amount of bank also influences a deviation on your uh, magnetic compass. So those two things, what kind of heading are you flying, both the amount of bank that you put in, are the two factors that come into play of how early or how late you should make your turn to get to your heading. So I'll just show you the problem that I also saw on the previous stream. We're still flying in echo airspace here, so it's totally fine. Make sure to follow Leo, appreciate it. 
Um, so let's just fly south. So south, right? Just 30 degrees to the right. So let's make that turn. My, my magnetic compass already is saying that I'm already now at south, but I'm not there yet. Now I'm at the south. And that can be a little bit confusing when you've got a partial instrument uh, partial instrument failure going on and you cannot fly on the heading indicator because it's not working because you've got a vacuum problem and you need to fly on the compass alone. Best would be to fly the turn indicator actually and do timed turns that Keith also suggested in the last stream. That works pretty well. If you fly a standard rate turn, you know that you will turn 360 degrees in two minutes, right? So that means about three degrees each second. So if you know your current heading based on your magnetic compass, 150, and you need to fly to the south, you know that you need to make 30 degrees of change to get to the south. Um, and that would mean 10 seconds. A 10 second turn to the right in a standard rate. Right? That's how you would do it. And that would pretty much work. But let's pretend that that's also not working. Then um, we need to fly um, on the magnetic compass. Again, I'm not on my southerly direction. So let's just get south and go to the north. And let's see what happens. So we're now flying south, right? Magnetic compass is telling us pretty much the same. I can see some gyro drift here. So actually we... Oh. This is better. Yeah, south. Something like this. Okay, let's go to the north. So, standard rate turn. As we are now getting closer to an easterly direction, the compass would be much more aligned with our heading indicator. You can see it's catching up. East, well, that's not that much the case here in the flight sim. In the real world, it does. So you can see the magnetic compass is not as reliable as my heading indicator. Now, again, it's going to go much slower near the north. And I should now already change. And now the heading indicator or the magnetic compass is also with north. So you can see I should start my leveling off when I'm going to the north earlier than what my magnetic compass should suggest and it will catch up lately. Now that's confusing stuff. Let's go to the south again. Standard rate turn. So again, it's still indicating north, right? So our heading indicator, our actual heading is actually ahead, ahead of the magnetic compass. Now the magnetic compass is catching up. It's turning faster, as you can see. There's east. East, it's now okay. Now it's going to slow down, I guess. Oh, I'm not... I'm also increasing my bank here. So it's ahead. It's already at south, but we're not at south. Now I should turn. And then my magnetic compass is settling. That is confusing. So, if I've got a head, a, a gyro drift, or a, a a gyro error, or I would say a vacuum failure while I'm flying, and my heading indicator is not working, I would stick to making timed turns first rather than doing this stuff because this is a little bit confusing. Voluto, do you think the relative exchange spec or uh, Airfall Labs is better? Well, it depends on what you like to simulate. I think that SimCoders wins on, on so many more fronts than the Airfall Labs. I do like the dynamic walk-around of the Airfall Labs. Uh, also, many more buttons are interactive, which is nice. But I think the, the cockpit is, is ugly. It's not a, a realistic-looking Cessna 172. And also in terms of support and bugs and that kind of stuff, SimCoders just wins. So uh, I would vote uh, for SimCoders. Okay, let's fly north now. All right. 
right, going much too quick. He's still much too quick. I think we're about... Now it's slowing up. Even turning a little bit backwards. Now it's turning at 30 degrees before. Like there, I'm going to make my round off. Yes, pretty much. That's north. If I go south, it's the other way around. And then... I should... Overfly my turn in terms of the magnetic compass. Really fast, really fast turn there of the magnetic compass. There I come south, but I'm not there yet. Overturning 30 degrees. I guess... Oh, that doesn't work. There it is. And turn. Well, pretty much. But it seems to get stuck a little bit from the south. So that's the magnetic compass for you. I need to practice this in IMC in my next stream. And actually with a failure. Uh, a failed uh, vacuum uh, system. So we can practice that. But that's the magnetic compass. It's quite confusing and then also you got deviation and all kinds of other stuff but it's interesting Shirley Willie it's good to see you on the stream welcome buddy appreciate your presence here thanks all right um, what can we do we can fly traffic patterns because I'd like to let's return to thermal Let's also go to a more dawn setting. Oh yeah, look at this. Cochrane traffic, yellow Skyhawk is seven miles southeast of the airport, currently at 3,500 and descending. We're gonna enter the left downwind on the 45 degree and do some touch and goes on runway one seven. That was not a really clear announcement. Thank you, Jared, for the uh, follow. And Chikulaka. Happy Sunday. I should have mentioned my runway first and then mentioned how I enter it. Man, this wind sound volume is getting annoying. I'm really, I think I'm speaking so loud to over... Um, So you guys can hear me. And no way for me to change that volume, unfortunately, with the current version of rep. Landing lights were still on. Ah, that's not good. I guess also we should have leaned our mixture during flight the way we were doing maneuvers. But it might be fun to do a run-up, a power check when we when we are on the ground, to see if we got uh, foul plugs. That might be interesting. Ah, that's better. It's so pretty at night in X plane. Look at that. Yeah, Claude. Oh, that's good. That's good. Thanks, Dad. Good to see you. Well, in my headset, it is loud. <laughs> the clock is still running. Thanks for the follow, Dingo. So many new guys here. New pilots. That's awesome. Thank you, Ron, for confirming. Alrighty. Traffic pattern. Altitude was around 1,000. 900. Nice lit up ramp there. You can see Bermuda, Air Bermuda Junes Airport in the distance.
so nice with all the lights and the traffic there on the highway. It's so pretty, guys. I love X-Plane. Claude, uh, my question got a little bit lost between streams. Sorry, uh, but are you planning to attend FS Weekend in Ladysat? Absolutely, Claude. Even more so, I will actually speak at the event about streaming and flight simming. and So I will do a lecture. So uh, we can shake hands, definitely. Also, Evanek will join. Hoping Kimo will join as well. We could have a nice get-together of the Flying Dutchman. Cochrane traffic, Yellow Skyhawk is three miles southeast of the airport. Uh, we're going to enter the 45 degree for runway 17 and do close traffic touching goes. Cochrane. Let's hit our heading bug as a memory aid. Seven. That's good. Coming up to traffic by altitude. Speed is already okay for first notch of flaps. There we go. It's so pretty at night. A little bit of power here. I like to be 80 plus. Let's trim up a bit. Okay, and I didn't see any traffic here. Cochrane traffic, yellow scar because now only left downwind, 17, touch it goes. Cochrane. A little bit more power. And there we are. gaze outside for hours it's so pretty and again x enviro is doing an amazing job with that haziness and sky colors which i really like uh, we're already climbing 100 feet we can already start our descent here Let's see if we can butter this landing. Nice helipad. Such a pretty airport. Okay, mixture full in. Fuel tanks at the both. Parking brakes are released. We also put on our navigation lights, by the way, as we're now flying. Dusk. Cochrane traffic, yellow sky is now turning left base, runway 17 for touching coast. Cochrane. Keep that speed in the white band so we can set another notch of flaps. You can hear the wind increase, the sound volume increase with our flaps down. There comes the runway. But again, I think that that sound volume is a little bit too much. Cochrane traffic, Yellow Skywalk is now on short final. 1-7, touch and goes. Cochrane. 
bit too high, but we got all the runway in the world. Also, we're too fast. It's so pretty. Look at that. It's nice. Do some forward slip here so we can descend a little bit more quicker without gaining airspeed. Which is uh, not really a recommended procedure with laps on, but still. And there we go. A lot of energy still under the wings. Let's get rid of that first. Nice. Laps up. Here comes 60. Again, I love that I don't need to put in that much rudder deflection. Cochrane traffic, Kielos Cargo is now on the upwind, 1-7, left close track, Cochrane. And I don't see any other traffic here. So let's just shortcut our traffic pattern. So a little bit more room here to make our base turn in just a sec. Cochrane traffic Los Carcas now already past midpoint, left downwind for Tachikos 17. Cochrane. It's good to me. Watch your flaps. Nose down trim. Ah, <laughs> nice to see, Piper. Yeah, well, Sim Coders and me are actually collaborating. We partnered up uh, because we think we are a natural fit here to uh, inspire Sim Pilots to fly the 172 in a realistic uh, training fashion. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're gonna. We're still exploring how to set up that collaboration, but uh, I think it's uh, for the better for us all. Proud to, to be uh, endorsed by them. Rocket traffic, Kilos Cargo is turning left base one seven, touch and go, Scopper. Watch my speed there. It's still not that much in the white band. A bit nose up there. Too high. Cochrane traffic, Kielo Skyhawk is turning final 1-7, touch and go, Cochrane. Watch that band, watch that band, I literally, a little bit overshot it, so that's stress on the flaps. That's the danger when you put in that flap and go nose down when you're high, that you're gonna exceed that speed, that max um, flap speed, and damage your wing. So again, we could do some forward slip here. It's so nice. Look at that. Okay. Again, too extreme, too much energy under the wing, so prevent ballooning here. There goes the speed, gradually put the nose up, gradually up, 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 and gradually the nose goes down. Lips up, full power. Again, dancing on the pedals to get on center line, there's 60, and rotate. Nice and gentle. Keep that right rudder in. A little bit nose down to get to VY. And there we go. 
Last lap. Da -da 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 -da. Let's change our patterns just for fun's sake. Cock and traffic, yellow Skyhawk is entering the right downwind for one way, one, two, full stop. Cock run. Again, if, if there was anyone in the pattern, I would do this in a much more careful way, but we're just having fun here. One, two at the bottom. And here's where you can see the haziness of X Enviro is a little bit unrealistic. It's a really thick, almost smog-like band. Let's just turn it off and see what the default looks like. Uh, off. This is default. Also very pretty. Watch my speed here. And it's still got it's still got haziness. But not that much. And again, XMVAR provides a little bit better METAR, more detailed METAR data than default X-Plane. So I had times when I was seeing VMC on 4Flight and I loaded up X-Plane default and I uh, saw overcast, which is not good. Put in that 20 degree of flap here. There we go, a little bit nose up. Cochrane traffic, yellow skyhawk is turning right base, runway 1 2 for a full stop, Cochrane. For in the distance, I can see MTR traffic. <laughs> That's nice. 1 2. Watch the speed here, the most dangerous, risky turn is from base to final. Because you're so focused on that runway while in a low speed configuration, easily stall and crash. And it's actually also where most, I think, accidents for, uh, for landing arrival accidents happen. At least in VFR. Cargo traffic, Kielos Cargo is now turning short final, 1 2, full stop, Cargo. Also nice that I can log some night landings here. Nice speed. Could trim up a bit because I'm pulling on that yoke. Trimming really helps to nail that touchdown. Thanks for the follow, W. And thank you guys for being for so many, so many of you here on the stream. That's definitely a uh, an average record there. Awesome. 88 people. That's cool. Pretty really encouraging. All right, let's butter this landing, he said. Nose up, focus on the far end of the runway, and again, energy. Ah, I was a little bit sooner on that runway as I thought. This is a little bit too early of an exit. Again, the airplane, the wrap airplane here, feels also a lot more stable on the ground. It's not all over the place as with the uh, stock 172, when it's so sensitive. That's what I really, really like about uh, the wrap here. All right, pulling on the yoke here for some aerodynamic braking. Landing lights off, taxi lights on, lean for ground because our spark plugs are fouling. We should do a run-up power test soon. Cock run traffic. Yellow Sky is clear on a 1 2 back taxiing to the ramp via the northwest taxiway. Run. There's only one taxiway here that connects this runway. Well, two actually, but this taxiway goes all the way down to the ramp. And there might be other traffic on the ramp that is now playing to taxi to 1 2. And so we can uh, taxi into one another. Still, though, I have seen a 
YouTube video on thermal where two Learjets, um, or not, was it the Learjet? No, that's not true. It was a Cessna Skyhawk was just landed on 1-7 and a Learjet taxiing from the ramp to take off on the other side. It was quite confusing. And they ran into each other on the taxiway. And well, because it's an untowered airport, um, they just figured it out on the CTAF that uh, that stuff happens. It's not a big thing, but it's courteous to, to say something about it. What a pretty sight. Inbound traffic. I think that is AI. Again, you can hear the engine sputter. Uh, that's usually an indication that the cylinders are also not... Or indication. That leads to the cylinders not being hot enough. And so usually leads to... Uh, Fouling of the spark plugs. Which might actually be a nice exercise. I am lean for ground. But we can uh, check on the ramp and just do a power run up. Even though you would never do that on the ramp. Oh my. Strobes were still on. Ramp, it says. That sounds good to me. Or am I. Should have I taken that turn? I don't know. Let's see. It's nice to taxi here through the woods. <laughs> Mike, good. Good that you're sold. It is really real. And that's explained for you. These are actual lights. Actual lights. It's so much more pretty than uh, prepared and, uh, and FSX. And this is really where, where you can see the power of explains graphics. It's, it's at night when it's so nice. I'm also sometimes doing just traffic patterns on uh, Santa Monica on Pilots on my own, off stream. And I always fly at night, it's also good practice. But it's so pretty, it's so relaxing, it's also easy for your eyes. And especially with all the city lights, it's, it's really nice. And again, so pleased that you guys are uh, digging uh, the sim coders uh, 172 uh, rep I'm digging it too really been looking forward to this release and again so excited that uh, I'm partnered up with sim coders and they endorse my my training program here they've actually been um, following my episodes from the start which is good they are followers as well Alrighty, here's the ramp. <laughs> That's so cool. And again, this is scenery by Greg, GPB 500. Uh, an amazing job here. It's a package including a lot of airports. If you're interested in that scenery, airport scenery, and have a look at one of my earlier streams, just search on Google, on YouTube, I mean. Get an elaborate review of me going through all the airports that are included in that package. Highly recommended uh, payware scenery. We are going to park. Well, oh, that will be a nice spot here. Again, noticing. Uh, thanks for the subscription, Berlin. Matt. That means a lot. Thank you, man. Welcome for dropping by. Thank you for dropping by. Let me see. Okay. Uh, park over here. And there we are. A subscription by Matt. That's awesome. Oh, Mrs. is going to like that as well. So, so cool. Thank you, guys. All right. So, here we are at the ramp. Uh, I'd like to do a power-up to see if we actually fouled the spark plugs, because we don't know. Uh, we're, we are running on low RPM. I didn't lean during cruise, so perhaps... Uh, I know that it's actually working, uh, that uh, dynamic here in the wrap, uh, but let's see what happens. Uh, mixture full in. 
never do that on the ramp in the real world obviously because now any airplane behind us will be uh, get a lot of uh, wind shear there or wind uh, speed uh, 1800 that's good no uh, enunciated messages left max seems fine by me well not I don't know where that sound is actually coming from. I've never heard that in A2A. Uh, never seen or uh, hear anybody talk about that. If you've got um, filed plugs, that you would hear something other than just an RPM drop. Let's go right, Max. Yeah, you can hear the same. You can see the drop is a little bit more significant than expected. So you can see that actually the way I'm flying the 172 is influencing the behavior are of the of the engine in this case and also ultimately my flight performance and that's great that's so educational um, so how can we actually clean that up to see if we don't hear this really weird sound well <coughs> the idea is to increase our engine here RPM so we are actually heating up our cylinders oh wow that's also cool with the stock 172, if I go full power, uh, my manual brakes can still handle that amount of pressure uh, with full power. But with the rep, that is not the case. And I think that's realistic too. Let's go to 2000. And then what we're going to do is lean our engine until the engine becomes rough. Like so, I guess. It's a little bit too jaggery to me. In the real world, this is much more fluent. But what we're doing here is we're trying to heat up the cylinders actually heat up the EGT. You can see it's rising right now. And we're getting the cylinders to get so hot that it actually burns off, evaporates the fouling on the plugs. So we clean them by heating up. And we need to do that for 20 seconds or so. And again, it's hard to tell how our, uh, how the rep package likes us to do this because we can also further lean to this. Or perhaps it's a little bit too much. So need to look up uh, the manual there to know what the procedure is for the rep but it should be realistic though um, so I would expect as soon as we see that the engine becomes rough perhaps then also full power because we don't have that much power you can see the fuel flow is a little bit weird here so that's not realistic I would say <laughs> all right let's see if we did something good here so full mixture and let's go back to 1800s left mag yeah you can see we clean it you don't hear the sound anymore which is new to me the sound but you can also see that the drop from 18 is uh, like we would expect and it's comparable I guess to the right one yes so we cleaned up the um, the plugs and uh, we could then do our departure and continue our flight that's cool okay uh, but still I think that that um, cleaning of the fall plugs if you look at that procedure was a little bit weird you could see the fuel flow needle there was doing all kinds of things that I wouldn't uh, expect to see happening and to me it's not clear how much of a lean you would apply here to um, uh, to, to clean off those uh, spark plugs with the A2A for example and also in the real world it's much more steady you could you still see that on a particular mag that the um, RPM is suddenly dropped, but this is a little bit too mechanic, I think, and also therefore a little bit unrealistic. But again, this is the current version, um, 310, I believe, and I'm betting that SimCoders will um, release some further updates. That's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, that's that. Uh, taxi lights off, uh, avionics off, cut off. And then the magneto, so everything is burned in the cylinders. And that's that. Let's also open the door, because why not? Prevent cross-feeding. And there we are, release our seatbelts. My real seatbelts in this chair as well, because I'm totally insane. Thank you for all the follows, guys. Man, that was a nice stream. And I have to say, still, Matt is on my mind, in a good way. Uh, thank you for uh, that subscription. Um, appreciate that. Another great stream, thank you, Snipe. Okay, so what we're gonna do is review the flights. Um, not that there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here because we just did plane traffic patterns and some demo test flight maneuvers with the uh, with the Rep um, 172. Um, but still, it's fun also just perhaps to review the landing. Okay, dope. flight recorder, there we go. Uh, something like this. Well, we could put it over. 
could put it over here. That's fine by me as well. Uh, yep. Shift 4. Control P. Here we are. All right. So again, we did some uh, stall and spin um, uh, procedures there. And my opinion is, is that that wasn't that realistic at all. It was quite hard to get it stalled, proper stall. I mean, we hear, we did hear the stall horn, but um, the Cessna still very in a very stable fashion went down um, rather than really dropping one wing, the left wing. Um, so that could be improved. Also, it was quite hard uh, to even get it into a spin. Um, you can see a uh, quite rapid drop here, but uh, as soon as I uh, neutralized my yoke input and my rudders, uh, rather than a full left deflection, uh, it was stable right right away um, that I would not expect. Even with flaps down, also flaps up, um, it didn't really make any difference. Balins, if you have smart co-pilot, we should take her out for a spin together. Oh, that would be so cool, Matt. That would be really cool. But I'm... I don't know, perhaps you know, this is the rep now, and I guess these systems are so sophisticated, there's so much data, I guess also unique data on my side here of how I treated my Cessna over time in my rep, that if you fly with the rep too, uh, that wouldn't work. Or perhaps there should be a new smart co-pilot file that does exchange that information. I don't know how that works, but we could also fly um, with the default 172. That would be so cool, Matt. Love to do that. Sure. Um... Anyways, that was the stall and spin. Uh, then we were just flying here, I guess, to have some fun. What did we do here? Oh, yeah, the magnetic compass flying as part of my IFR tra tra training. Yeah, so that was still... I was getting the idea of what the errors are of the compass, right? That you, uh, when you're flying north or southbound, that the compass becomes uh, erroneous, about 30 degrees or so, and you should shortcut your turn or you should overturn to get to the right... Um, uh, heading um, and I kind of get the idea you can see my turns here from north to south were quite okay ish that was good but I guess in the real world also for my training for my episodes and guys if you're new uh, to the uncertified pilot uh, hop over to uncertifiedpilot.com you can see my scheduled training flights um, in my season one I was training for becoming a VFR pilot based on the pilot edge cat ratings um, which, which I really, really enjoyed. But now with my season two, I'm heading um, towards earning my instrument rating, earning all the I ratings, but also including a lot of practice flying that is actually based on real world instrument training in a Cessna 172. Doesn't really matter that much that's in 172, but it's actual real world training. Uh, all kinds of approaches, also NDB approaches that we're gonna do, um, and all based on real-world uh, training resources, King, King Schools, also the Pilot Edge real-world um, IFR training course. Um, so that's really, really exciting. And as part of that, partial instruments flying is also one stage of my training. And so I'd like to be able to fly on my compass when my heading indicator is not working, when I've got a vacuum system failure going on. So that's why. Now, as part of that training, if I would experience um, uh, instrument failure there, a vacuum system failure, I would first try to fly on my turn indicator using time turns to get to my heading, rather than trying to mess with the magnetic compass because it's a little bit confusing to me. So it's a good skill, but yeah. Valins, you can just send me your rep files and I'll work fine. Okay, awesome. That sounds more easy than I thought, Matt. Well, definitely work something through I'd be awesome. That was so great. That made my day, Matt. Thank you. And also a subscription. Wow, I'm going to tell um, Mirai and Mrs. Uncertain. Have you seen her solo? I mean, uh, she knows you're a very big streamer. She would love to know that you dropped by. Anyways, so, um, yeah, that was that. So I got a compass string. Then we just flew to Thermal here and enjoyed ourselves. Traffic flying, traffic banner flying is still so much fun. It's basic, but it's fun. Yeah, I've been watching all day. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Okay, so, uh, again, apologies for the sounds here. The sound volume, I guess. Downwind. There we go. Base. Overshot that turn just a tiny bit. Now, let's see. Oh yeah, this was my forward slip to lose some altitude here. You should never do that with flaps on. You can easily stall. It's also in the POH, by the way. 
Let me see. Uh, here we go. It's hard to see the shit. Yeah, you cannot see any shadow here, so it's hard to see if I actually... Butter this landing, but here we are. Nicely proud. Nose up. Very good. Wheels. Main wheels first. And then the nose. Looks good to me. Let's just do it a little bit more quicker. And there we come in. Z With the door open, but who cares. Yeah, so I had a lot of energy under my wings here. I was too fast, too high. So you can see I took a lot of distance here, a lot of runway to get down. But you just allow the energy to get off of your wings. Out of your wings. I don't know. A little bit too much, I think. A little bit too harsh of a landing. Well, it was not bad. It was not bad, not bad. And the last one. We hopped over to runway one two. There we are. This landing was good. I think it was best actually. <laughs> As someone said earlier, better than Netflix. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Man, coming from you, that really means a lot. Thank you. It's really encouraging. Uh, I didn't notice my landing at all. And um, again. It's hard to see here at night, but... Well, this was actually not the best landing, I think. Oh. Mm, yeah, my nose could have been a little bit more up. And my main wheels and nose wheels... Um, touched down uh, very quickly after one another, so... That was not, not that much, but... A good landing after all, but it's just fun to... Uh, to review that. Okay, um, back to the ramp. So guys, that include concludes our stream today. Miraya doing her traffic pattern practice and also her short cross-country practice. Uh, it is challenging to fly just on visuals. Even for me as a pilot, that would still be challenging. More than just flying a plain VOR radial or an approach or whatever. Um, finding your own way uh, old school um, ar around the scenery here is, is actually quite difficult. And I'm so proud of her that she uh, did a great job. Still, there's stuff that we can optimize. But um, she's really doing a, a, a blast. It's really a blast to fly with her. It's, it's really awesome. Okay, having said that, also with my flight here, um, that was my review for the uh, Cessna 172 rep. I think an out, out 8 out of 10 for the current version. There are still some things that I would love, the, uh, love for them to improve. Uh, for example, uh, this menu, I would like to just hide it completely or bring it up with a key bind or it should be somewhere away from my side. I, it, it, it's distracting and it, again, gives me a feeling that I'm in a simulator. And X-Plane and Eleven um, is so good, actually, that I sometimes forget that I'm actually flying a flight sim, especially at night. So um, there are lots of, lots of other uh, things there also with the... Um, uh, with the startup and also with the spins and the stalls, minor things that they will, uh, that I'm sure that they will improve um, further on. And again, as a uh, very brand new partner uh, with Sim Coders, I'm going to tell them, and uh, I'm sure that they will respond because uh, their support crew there is so much more better than the Airflow Labs. Sorry that I'm hitting Airflow Labs, but I was so annoyed. I was just waiting for six months or so for them to release another version, and again it was disappointing. Um, no, that's not the way to do it. Um, oh, Snipe, I totally forgot. Yeah, I will do that right now. You were curious about my settings. Um, yeah. And how do I get there? Uh, I guess joystick. I guess? Where can I see the sensitivities? Front. This is just calibration. Control sensitivity. There. Is this even a good setting? I don't even know. I don't even know. Perhaps I should change my settings. This doesn't seem like a fully linear. Can someone suggest to me what a good setting would be? I don't know if it's even in the manual of the 172 rep. Hey, 777, good to see you. 
let me know, guys. Uh, whisper me or email me or Twitter me or something because I think this is a little bit of a far too simplified setting. And I think there's nothing left that we can discuss. I guess also the uh, rudder pedals. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. 37 Bravo! Those are the most realistic. Matt, I find the setting you're using is good for a joystick. For a yoke, though, you want them about halfway. Okay, let's do that. And for the rudders, is, too, is, is that similar for the rudders as well, Matt? Or only for the yoke? Uh, yoke. Control. Halfway. Well, let's try in the next stream to see if I can notice the different difference. Control response and stability augmentation. We should study a little bit more what it actually means. Kind of have an idea, but... Pedals you can keep on the left. Roger. That's great help. Hello? Can I just set it? Well, something like this, and I will notice a difference in the next stream. Okay. Well, uh, Snipe, thank you for referring to me, uh, referring me to that screen because uh, I wasn't actually aware of that at all. All right. For as far as we can see, our lovely Pop Hotel Tengri Mike Cessna Skyhawk. Again, guys, um, that completes today's stream. Uh, much enjoyed it. So many of you who jumped uh, jumped aboard here. Uh, also, a new average record of about 90 people here. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you for the support, also the subscription, also by Matt, especially. Um, but uh, all of your support is, uh, is so much appreciated. Uh, this is so fun, isn't it? Just a fly. Uh, and I also just really enjoyed uh, watching Mariah fly uh, with her own livery and her own cockpit and even her own Mrs. Uncertified Pilot shirt. Uh, that was really awesome. Okay, so that concludes this particular episode. Next up, I'm going to continue with serious training again. Um, and I'm going to do some partial instrument flying with unusual attitudes and stalls. There, Mireille will jump on board and she will mess me up. She will set me in a really unusual attitude here with my airplane. And I need to figure how to recover from that using partial instruments. So without an artificial horizon, uh, without you name it, right? Um, so that's going to be exciting, I think. Um, and will really prep me for scenarios where Keith will jump on board while I'm doing my eye rating or while I'm doing anything serious and he will uh, give me a failure on the go without me knowing. So uh, it's good that I prepare and train for that. So once more, thank you for all the follows. Thank you for being here. Also, Matt, especially as a VIP, thank you so much for your support and encouragement. Thanks. And for all of you who jumped here aboard and all the follows, thank you so much, guys. It's amazing. It's such an oh, indescribable fe feeling. It's, it's so great to see how um, supportive the community is. Um, again, as always, happy flights, blue skies, and hoping to see you very, very soon on my next flights. Keep a track on my Twitter or Discord where I will announce my flights and you can jump aboard as soon as I jump aboard and you can help me improve my flying as always. Thanks again. Hoping to see you soon. Bye guys. Palm Springs Tower, Skyline, Pop Hotel, Tango, and your mic is 10 miles north of the airport at 3000 with information x-ray and for a full stop and landing 13 left if that's available. Hotel Tango, India Mike, Palm Springs.